I'm going to give you some food for thought and we're going to talk about how a mother's presence or an abs or the absence impacts the child's emotional intelligence and the child's ability to process emotions, the ability to understand his or her own emotions and the ability to take care of their own self. And I'm going to help you uh, see this uh, thing from a biological standpoint, from a sociological standpoint and from an astrological standpoint. So be with me. <laughs> so uh, there are a lot of changes that happen in a woman's body once she delivers her baby. So there are specific changes that happen in her brain. And this, there's this region in the brain called as the amygdala, which is responsible for the processing of emotions and you know, uh, emotional responses of fear, anger, grief, shock protection, you know, all of those kind of uh, different emotions and also love and caring and nurturing and understanding someone's needs. Now, after a woman gives birth to a baby, her amygdala starts expanding. So the surface area of the amygdala is expanding. And the more she interacts with the baby, the more her amygdala is growing. And the more she's becoming attuned to the baby's responses. So the more eye contact that she does with the baby, like you know a lot of times we play with the baby, we look at the baby and when we're looking at the baby and then you know the baby smiles and then the mother smiles and then the mother makes a face and then the baby makes the same face and you know that whole loving exchange that happens within the baby and the mother and the mother closes the eyes, the baby closes the eyes and then suddenly the mother may look away and then the baby keeps searching for where the mother is. You know so all these different loving exchanges or holding the baby, feeding the baby, touching the baby, being with the baby. So the more a woman does that, the more her amygdala is growing. And then the reward centers in her brain are getting rewarded. So the more she intact, interacts with the baby, her brain has, is having those changes so that there are certain hormones being reduced which make her feel rewarded. So for more interaction, more reward, more happiness. And that's how you know you know you can see how a woman's voice can become so syrupy and so sweet when she's dealing with the baby because you know that's that whole exchange and it's happening at a physical level it's not just the emotional bonding or the feeling of being a mother but all of these things are happening at a, as a at a very physical level and then this hormone the oxytocin hormone which is responsible for a maternal infant bonding across all mammalian species is also being you know is being uh, you know excreted and the more the baby interacts with the child, the more of that hormone is being uh, you know, secreted, the more the mother is feeling pleased and happy, and then the more she's becoming attuned. So many times you will notice that a new mother may suddenly run from the room, and you would wonder what, and then you know, till we hear the baby cry, it will be a few more seconds, but the mother's already heard. So what is happening through all of this process is that she's becoming more and more tuned to the baby. And you've seen another thing is that a woman who, feed, who is able to feed the baby and hold the baby, you know, the mother is feeling more satisfied and more peaceful and experiences less postpartum depression. So some of these reasons that contribute to that. Now, a very important factor to consider is while the mother's body is becoming attuned to respond to the baby's emotion and to care for him, the baby's body is also undergoing a lot of changes. Babies also having a lot of brain development. So the more you're doing that eye contact and that game and then the holding the baby etc. The baby is also having changes in the brain that help the baby become more and more attuned to the mother and more and more attuned to his own self. So when children are born they don't know, uh, they must just start crying and it's only when the mother will come and say are you hungry? You know that then the child realizes that oh I'm hungry and you know this is what's happening in my stomach and because of this I'm crying. Or if they get hurt, then they say, oh, my baby's hurt. So, you know, the child understands what's happening to him or her based on how the mother is responding to the child, right? So while the mother is undergoing these changes, the baby's brain is undergoing changes and the baby is developing its sense of self and it's understanding who he is, you know, how does my primary caregiver relate to me? Is my primary caregiver trustworthy? Is my primary caregiver around me all the time? 
and uh, you know do I have a good relationship with my primary caregiver does my primary caregiver understand me when I'm crying you know and is the primary caregiver able to respond to my needs you know so the baby is also developing those things even if it is in a very non-verbal way but all of these uh, different uh, you know things are developing in the baby also so this whole chemistry that happens between the mother and the child helps both of them grow in being emotionally empathic towards each other and towards the world so if this relationship is not formed for the baby then the baby's sense of self is not developed because the baby is not received that kind of nurturing and that kind of care so if a mo mother is absent emotionally even if she's physically present or she may be emotionally absent because she's probably having an illness or she's going through her own challenges of having being a new mother or she has to go to work etc for whatever pressing reasons that may be there uh, you know the a baby's sense of self may not get so developed and you know sometimes that care needs to be give, re replaced by other caregivers also now if a baby does not grow up with that kind of nurturing you know a lot of times we think that oh the baby is small we can send the baby to daycare and you know sometimes we have to do that but uh, but that in initial bonding as we see it affects the physical aspects and the emotional aspects of the baby like that now when a child does not grow up receiving that and that relationship which is supposed to provide the most nurturing and the most covered feeling and the most protected feeling and the most loved feeling is absent in the child's life or is kind of shaky and you know kind of unpredictable in a child's life then the child grows up with low self-esteem and they're not able to make deep relationships with other people because they feel that if I make a relationship and that person may also leave me or go away or they may have difficulty relating with people loving them because they're not used to receiving that or they have difficulty trusting other people you know so this is an impact that can be made in childhood and that impact does not leave you even if you're 60 years old right and uh, so from a biological standpoint we understand how all of these things work and now let's look at this from an astrological standpoint so let's look at some of the social events that have happened recently so Adam Lanza was this young boy who went around he was a 19 or a 21 year old boy and his mother's name was Nancy Lanza and he went around shooting and he shot dead 21 children in a school and including the headmaster and the teachers and everyone and his mother used to teach in that school so he just drove his car he went and he just you know opened fire now uh, what we discovered is that before he came to Sandy Hook Elementary School and this became a big news in the US before he came and killed all those children and those teachers in that school he opened fire there he had first shot his mother dead at home and then he did that and then he came over and then there were a lot of news reports etc that I was following this happened around uh, 2012 and there was a lot of news reports and a lot of different ways in which people were trying to interpret the situation and then there were medical records and you know being furbished so one thing that was discovered was that Adam Lanza was mentally disturbed and he was on medication so he had, a, he had various different uh, behavioral issues. Another thing that came about was that he came from this broken home. So his parents were divorced, you know. So the mother and father had separated. Another thing that came out was that he had an extremely disturbed relation. So he stayed with his mother, but his mother was also emotionally disturbed for, you know, I'm sure for valid reasons. And uh, she had this whole uh, idea of, you know, her, her way of recreation was going to shooting ranges and learning how to shoot. And she used to take this young boy with her and teach him how to shoot. And another very important aspect that came out of this whole uh, story was when I started looking for uh, news reports and you know uh, different uh, articles on what was the astrological chart of the mother and the and Adam Lanza, right? So the moon in astrology is considered to be the karaka of the mind, right? And we've heard of the word lunacy or lunatic and it comes from lunar, the moon. So the moon represents the mind in astrology, in Vedic astrology. It's the karaka for the mind. It also is the karaka for the mother. It's also the karaka for emotional regulation. It's also the karaka for comfort and various other things. But at least these four is what we're going to talk about. Now, if in someone's astrological chart, the moon is weak, that means the relationship with the mother is affected. And there are emotional issues also in this person whose chart we're reading. So that's something you can see in this Adam Lanza, Nancy Lanza case. 
and you can also now, now we've seen this thing that you know how the mother and the child didn't have a great relationship and how this child was mentally disturbed right so we've seen this from a biological standpoint about how when a mother is fully available for her child you know and the child is getting that response from the mother how it helps him from the brain develop proper emotional regulation and systems and coping skills for emotional regulation and now we're also seeing this from the astrological standpoint that how a mother is such an important figure in a child's life but if in the chart you see something is off with the mother it also represents that the mind is going to be affected and that's something that you see was arjuna's concern in the first chapter of the bhagavad gita when he talks about that how this war uh, how because of war a lot of women will be rendered uh, you know they have to they live lives like single women and then there will be a lot of children the women may be exploited and then there will be a lot of children who will not be you know how the women may not be able to provide all the care and the thing you know the compassion etc that's needed for them and if you look at people who've been going on shooting sprees in the US and you look at their background history or if you look at uh, you know people who are joining the ISIS a lot of them come from disturbed homes who where they they felt they had homes where they were emotionally homeless and uh, you know and then this contributed to this whole generation of people who are joining the ISIS or were going around mentally disturbed shooting people etc so a very important contribution that a mother can make in a child's life is to be emotionally available for the child but now one thing that we also need to understand as society is for a woman to be able to perform her nurturing role properly she needs to be taken care of nicely so that's why in the vedic system a lot of protection was accorded to women where women did not have the pressure of running the house or running the you know or getting the bread in the house etc they did their stuff as we discussed in the previous video where they went around they had a much larger role than just taking care of the baby but while taking care of the larger role their important role of taking care of the baby was also included in that so they were given that physical and emotional protection by the family and by the society so that they could perform this very important role so as a society of people as citizens of this world it's important for us to understand that while we may have these ideas about how a woman must be present for her child it's important for us to create systems and it's important for us to encourage systems so that a woman can be protected so that she can do these things and express herself fully like that for contributing towards an emotionally healthy and an emotionally intelligent very strong core individuals that would take society further even if women are the 50% of the population they impact 100% of the future population so something for all of us to think about something for all of us to meditate as a woman we can meditate on this as to how we can uh, become more skilled in taking care of our children but as a society we can meditate on these thoughts on how we can create systems by which we can protect our women so that they can do this role very very nicely now while we talk about all of these things it's also important to know that we it was going to be very hard for any woman to be a perfect mother so that's not a, a pressure that we're trying to create by sharing these ideas and i guess the focus is going to be on am i a good enough mother you know am i able to respond to my child when my child is crying you know i will get angry and i will get upset and i will have my mood swings and i will be emotionally low some low sometimes and i will be extremely attuned to my child sometimes you know and that is going to happen and you know that's good for the child also because the child is also learning about how to deal with other people's emotions so the idea is not to become a perfect mother where you know you're always you know doing everything perfectly the idea is can you can we become a good enough mother and can society facilitate us to become good enough mothers where we can learn how to tune ourselves and you know know that okay i'm getting angry right now what do i learn from this and okay i learn i need to be uh, you know this is how i need to deal with the situation so i don't become angry so next time i'm going to do that so as a child sees the mother evolving the child also learns how to evolve in his or, you know in his or her own emotions so thank you very very much and i wish you the very best in your life thank you hari krishna